a fresh new year has begun. And if you're setting new goals for your business, it's extremely difficult to reach them without the right people on your team. And Zip Recruiter has transformed how you go about finding the right people. Zip Recruiter posts your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click. Then Zip Recruiter actively looks for the most qualified candidates and invite them to apply. They even review every application to identify the top candidates so you never miss a great match. That's why Zip Recruiter is different. Unlike other hiring sites, Zip Recruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. No wonder 80% of employers who post on Zip Recruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Find out today why Zip Recruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on Zip Recruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Stephen A. That's with a PH, not a V. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Stephen A. One more time to try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Stephen A. With a PH, not a V. Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage Um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I see a yellow-eyed serpent and a low APR. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. (laughs) This This is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Welcome to hour number two. For the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio coming at you, as I love to do, every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. 250 plus markets across the United States of America. And of course, Sirius XM, ESPN Radio, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Once again, that's 888-SAY-ESPN. The Stephen A. Smith Show, hour number two, being brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor roll performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. You know, a story like this, as it pertains to the NBA and recent comments by uh, Rick Harlow, coach of the Dallas Mavericks, president of the National Basketball Coaches Association. Um, it's a touchy subject because Rick Carlisle is a championship coach. He's a damn good coach. Even though Stan Van Gundy is devoid of a championship, there is no denying that he's an exceptional coach. I appreciate the candor of both. I've spoken to Rick Carlisle about this subject in regards to Laval Ball and his his uh his verbiage and his incendiary verbiage towards uh, Luke Walton, coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Stan Van Gundy is in on it now. He's aimed his ire at ESPN. Uh, Rick Carlisle called out ESPN while calling out LeVar Ball as well, calling an article by Jeff Goodman, and uh, who was with the balls in Lithuania. A disgrace and one that erodes trust. Because Rick Carlisle and the Coaches Association were pointing to the relationship that they have with ESPN. And evidently they have a problem with the fact that uh, Jeff Goodman and ESPN printed this article quoting LeVar Ball going off about Luke Walton, how he's too young and, and, and he can't coach this team, which is the Los Angeles Lakers. This is why they were in the midst of a nine game losing streak before uh, the Lakers won a game the other night. I know Rick Carlisle. I don't know Stan Van Gundy that well. I know that I respect him. I know that his brother does an outstanding job here at this network. I know that we're honored to have Jeff Van Gundy. And when Stan Van Gundy was doing some work for ESPN, we were honored to have him. I like Stan Van Gundy. I really do. I love his candor and his honesty. But as I said about Rick Carlisle yesterday, it doesn't make them right all the time. Stan Van Gundy, after Rick Carlisle went off, 
about ESPN. Saying the story failed to provide quotes or perspectives from any players or from Lakers management, either named or unnamed, verifying the claims made in the story. The article lacks any of the basic fundamental benchmarks and standards of reliable journalism. This is according to Rick Carlisle and the National Basketball Coaches Association, essentially relegating it to ambulance chasing. I disagreed with Rick Carlisle. I disagree with Stan Van Gundy. What did Van Stan Van Gundy have to say? Listen to him yourself. Take it away, y'all. I just thought it was a cheap shot, and I thought ESPN showed total disrespect. Um, I don't have a problem with LeVar Ball. I don't. He can. He's a grown man. He can voice whatever opinion he wants. I got a problem with ESPN deciding that that's a story. <sighs> with all due respect. I think what Stan Van Gundy just said is utterly ridiculous. It is a story. If you don't have a problem with Laval Ball, you certainly can't have a problem with ESPN. At least Rick Carlisle had the decency to, to, I shouldn't say decency because it's not like Stan Van Gundy was indecent in any way. So a better word would say at least Rick Carlisle highlighted how he had a problem with Laval Ball every bit as much as he had a problem with ESPN. But I'll say about Stan Van Gundy's comments, the same thing I said about Rick Carlisle and the National Basketball Coaches Association statement. LeVar Ball is the father of the number two overall pick who is a point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers. LeVar Ball, obnoxious, loquacious, classless, or any other word y'all want to point out towards him because of this statement about Luke Walton. No matter how distasteful it may be, that doesn't make it not newsworthy. LeVar Ball's son is the point guard of the coach he was talking about, who happens to be the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. That makes it a story. And with all due respect, not to get even remotely political here, but if we're going to quote and lament or laugh at and denigrate a future to be commander in chief at the time who during the campaign was validating the size of his hands, everything's up for grabs. I want, I would love to sit down with a Stan Van Gundy or a Rick Carl- I- I'm not talking about the distastefulness because they're right about that. Rick Carlisle was right about that. Everything he said about LeVar Ball in regards to the quote about Luke Walton was absolutely right. He was wrong. It was beyond the pale. He had no business saying it. He was wrong. But to blame the network for quoting this man. Is ridiculous. His son is your starting point guard. I think the Vol Ball's comments was a betrayal of Magic Johnson. It was a betrayal of the Los Angeles Lakers. It was even a betrayal of his son. Because it put his son in a bad spot and it makes you raise your eyebrows and wonder what is the son going home telling his daddy? And that's not fair to Lonzo. And it's even more egregious that his own father put him in that position. But it's a story. Everybody want to sit up there, stick out their chest. Oh, you know, who is Stan Van Gundy or Rick Carlisle? Tell ESPN. Stop that. We don't have to get into all of that. They can say what they want. They can feel how they want. All I'm saying is, is that it is clearly a story. That's the only premise I'm arguing. It is clearly a story. If LeVar Ball comes out and says, I don't want my son on the Lakers, Magic Johnson doesn't know what he's doing. We're not supposed to print that? We're not supposed to report that that's what he said? The man didn't say it anonymously. He said it. You don't quote him? Come on now. Come on. 888 
Say two seven two nine three seven seven six. That's eight eight eight. Say ESPN. That's one thing that I want to talk about. The other thing that I want to talk about was LeBron James and uh, him speaking out about H um, and M. H and M clothing had an advertisement out and. Um, to be completely honest, to be completely transparent, I can't applaud LeBron James enough for weighing in the way that he did on an ad that can only be described as tone deaf. It was an article for H&M featuring a young black male model wearing a hoodie and the inscription on the hoodie read coolest monkey in the jungle. That's what it said. LeBron James spoke out about it on his Instagram post. He put a crown on the kid's head. It said king of the world. And then LeBron James wrote quote H and M you got us all wrong and we ain't going for it straight up. Enough about y'all and more of what I see when I look at this photo. I see a young king, the ruler of the world, an untouchable force that can never be denied. We as African-Americans will always have to break barriers, prove people wrong, and work even harder to prove we belong. But guess what? That's what we love because the benefits at the end of the road are so beautiful. Hashtag live, laugh, love with a heart symbol. Hashtag love my people. Couldn't say it better myself. LeBron James is absolutely right. Snoop Dogg was absolutely right. H&M crossed the line with this particular advertisement, with this particular promo. Now, who in God's name in the year 2017 doesn't know that that's offensive? H&M should be ashamed of itself. And I applaud LeBron James for calling it out like that. He is the preeminent iconic figure, arguably in the world of sports, clearly in the basketball world. He may not be the king because he's not the champion. That would be Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors. But when he takes positions like this, it shows why he is worthy of being perceived as somebody having a crown. Because there was bigger LeBron James to point that out. It was the right thing to do. And I want to stay for the record. I stand with him 1,000%. That was a highly offensive promo. A highly offensive advertisement. And H&M should know better. Plain and simple. I'm not going to go any further than that. But that says it all. A little kid, little black kid at that. Wearing a hoodie, coolest monkey in the jungle, and you think that's cool? Inexcusable. Absolutely, positively inexcusable. Props to LeBron James, Snoop Dogg, and others who have spoken out against this. Consider me right there with them. 888-SAY-ESPN is the number to call up. That's 888-729-3776. Back to your calls and more in a minute. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Craving even more of Stephen A? Him of all people. For around-the-clock access to the man? I'm Stephen A. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Stephen A. Smith and on Facebook at Stephen A. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I want to piggyback off of what I was saying about LeBron James speaking out because I I want, listen, the Stephen A. Smith show just went in 250 plus markets nationwide across the United States of America. In no time, it'll probably be over 300. I'm greedy, y'all. I'm not interested in monolithic appeal from one particular community, in my case, the African-American community. I'm interested in mass appeal. I like everybody listening. I like everybody watching. The more, the merrier. And for me, the issue is fairness and it's understanding. You know, I, I want to say something that I've never said on air on on air before, but I've said off the air 
on, on many, many occasions to, to, to many people. I'm not somebody that believes that because somebody may have been insensitive racially or otherwise, that that makes you a racist or anything like that. I'm not built that way. I'm not that kind of guy. There are some people out there and the word ignorance is is, ignorant isn't always negative. There are some people out there that are simply ignorant and oblivious to what may be offensive to a particular community. That's why I'm, I try to be as fair and as understanding as I possibly can. There are white folks out there that do things that would come across as racially insensitive to an African-American. And they had absolutely no clue that they were remotely offensive. There are things that happen in various communities throughout our country where folks from a particular cultural group just didn't know. Or you just didn't know you were offensive to them. I communicate with folks from the Jewish community every day. There are certain things that I absolutely definitively know would come across as offensive and I do everything that I can to avoid it. My question is, what if I made a mistake and I was offensive one day and had no idea? Would I not want them to tell me so I could make sure I didn't repeat those mistakes? Absolutely. The Latino community, the Asian American community and beyond, we don't know. Even in the Native American community, you have some people who find the Redskins name highly offensive. The Tomahawk Chop, highly offensive. Whether it's Braves or Florida State Seminoles or whatever, highly offensive. Kansas City Chiefs, highly offensive. Others from the Native American community say, well, no, we're not offended. We just don't know. But when you do know, and when you're told, and you do it anyway, we got a problem. When we talk about H&M, what person doesn't know in this world that associating a black person with a monkey is not offensive? How could you possibly not know that? How could you possibly not know that? There's no way. That's why it's problematic. And that's why it needed to be said. I'm fair minded. Black folks offend other folks. I'm going to sit up there and say, look, you were wrong. But as a black man, if something is so flagrantly offensive, I have an obligation to speak out. And I will never hesitate to do so. Not if I believe that to be the case. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. We're going to talk some NFL playoffs because we've got some NFL playoff games coming up. We're going to talk about Nick Saban and whether or not he should go pro or stay at Alabama. We can talk about last night's championship game. We could also talk about the way that LeBron James, for all the good that he did by speaking out on his Instagram account against that insensitive act by H&M with their promo with the little black kid. We can also highlight the fact that LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers stuck up the joint last night. Minnesota blew them out the building. And if they continue to look that way in any capacity, they got no shot at winning the world championship and NBA championship. Just no shot whatsoever. By the way, I'm down here in the ATL because I was here last night for the national championship game. Once upon a time, the Atlanta Hawks looked to be relevant. You know why the Hawks ain't relevant now? Because Budenholzer can coach. And because he can coach and he's proven he could coach and they had a couple of years of success, they said, you know what? It appears they said, you know what? We can afford to take folks for granted. Clean house, curb spending, let's totally rebuild. Evidently, the city of Philadelphia isn't the only organization engaging in the process. Now it appears to be the Atlanta Hawks. Let's see how that works out for them. Back to the phones we go. Jonathan in Georgia, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. I just want to talk about uh, my opinion about LeBron James and the Cavs and why he is 
the double-edged sword of that city and that organization. You can't argue his greatness. The only thing subjective about his greatness is where you would rank him among the all-time greats, but he's there. But what LeBron James demands, Stephen A. Smith, is a win-now product, and you can't argue with that because he is one of the greatest, and he's in a position to win championships every year when you have them. The downside oh, stop, of stop, that stop, is that— Stop, 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 right there. Educate me. What was I arguing about with LeBron James? When you say I can't argue with it, what do you mean? Well, who's trying to argue with that? I just wanted your perspective on this. I just want to say okay. he's a double-edged sword to okay. where because he demands winning right now, Cleveland does not have the opportunity to build for the future because he's not interested in draft picks. He's not interested in building. So the problem is, yeah, you're going to win now with LeBron James and you're a contender to win a championship, definitely the Eastern Conference every season. But when and if he decides to leave after his contract expires right. and go somewhere via free agency, because they were limited – Winning in the now, they don't have the assets to build for the future. So while he's one of the greatest of so, all time, so what's your question? So what's your question? My question for you is, what do you think about that? Do you think that LeBron James is more of a hindrance in that way than he is a benefit for Cleveland? Well, Simply well, because when he's there, they can't build for the LeBron, future. All right, I'm going to start calling you Max. You keep going on, Jonathan, because that's a long that's a long question. But here's the deal: LeBron James. You can't necessarily fault him because you're always better because of his presence. You're always better because of him. It's unavoidable. But here's where you can throw some shade on the greatness of a LeBron James. Kyrie Irving's only 25, 26 years old. So when you sit there and say they can't necessarily build, the fact is if LeBron left after this season, you still would have had Kyrie. But you alienated him while he was there with LeBron. So if I'm Dan Gilbert or anybody else, what I'm doing is emphasizing to LeBron, we need you to make sure that you ingratiate yourself with cats to the point where even if you decide you want to do something different, we don't have to decimate our franchise because a whole bunch of folks didn't want to stay even while you were here. Not a whole bunch of folks, folks in this case because it was Kyrie Irving, but Kyrie Irving's a bad boy. That's a devastating loss. And I don't know how you get around that. Look at what he's doing in Boston. You realize that Kyrie Irving right now is an MVP candidate? You realize right now if the players were to begin the day that the Boston Celtics would be the number one seed in the Eastern Conference? And that's after Gordon Haywood went down in game one of the NBA season. Think about that. Think about that. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! So Rick Harlow had something to say about ESPN. Understood his point, but just disagree. Stan Van Gundy goes a bit further. No problem with LeVar Ball whatsoever, but he has a problem with ESPN. And of course, Steve... Kerr said something about it, calling it a ratings ploy. Listen to what Steve Kerr, Kerr, the two-time championship coach for the Golden State Warriors, had to say about LeVar Ball and his comments about Luke Walton. I talked to to, uh, people in the media this year. I said, "Why why do you guys have to cover that guy? They say, well, we don't want to. Nobody wants to. But our our bosses tell us we have to. Um, because of the ratings, because of the readership. So somewhere, that, um, I guess it's in Lithuania, LeVar Ball is laughing at all of us. People are eating out of his hands for no apparent reason, other than, you know, he's become like the Kardashian of the NBA or something, and, and that sells. I find nothing disrespectful about what Steve Kerr said as a perspective. Um... I'm on the record. I don't think this company should have went over to Lithuania to cover LeVar Ball. Neither of your sons have even proven they could play Division One basketball. And we don't know how successful or how unsuccessful the big baller brand is. One could argue the only reason they're relevant is because Lonzo Ball is playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. So I don't find fault with what Steve Kerr said in that regard. But I'll, op- I- I- I'll I'll read this tweet 
from Frank Isola of the New York Daily News, my buddy, who does an outstanding job and has done an outstanding job covering the Knicks for many, many years in New York City. Listen to what he wrote in this tweet. Steve Kerr and Stan Van Gundy have used their platforms to lecture us on politics. That's great. Yet they're not okay with the father of an NBA player having a platform to talk about his son's team. Question mark. Parentheses. Not an endorsement of obnoxious Laval. But how is it different? Question mark. Seriously. Frank Isola has a point. Now, I happen to find Steve Kerr a kind, decent, gentle man who's very, very smart and obviously very accomplished. I have no problem listening to him on politics. Greg Popovich served this country honorably. I certainly have no problem listening to his comments on on on, on politics. Stan Van Gundy, smart as a whip, incredibly honest and candid, somebody I respect. I have no problem listening to him on politics. But others might. Folks who are political aficionados might. People in that genre might. Constituents of uh, a candidate they did not support might. Did it stop them? And I don't recall any of them speaking in private. They made sure to speak in the microphones and cameras so the world would hear what they had to say. Now, are they comparable to a LeVar Ball? Of course not. Does LeVar Ball come across as classless? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, did he betray Magic Johnson, the Lakers, and even his son? Yes, he did. But he has a right to say what he had to say. And I will stand tall in telling you, you have to quote him. In that regard, you have to report that. The man is talking about his son's coach. If Laval Ball never said a word about Lonzo, but said, I don't want my son playing for the Los Angeles Lakers because I don't think Magic Johnson knows what he's doing. Will we have heard from these folks? Why this insatiable appetite to come to the defense of Luke Walton? Why? Luke Walton, I think, is a good young coach. I think he should be given a chance. Magic Johnson and Rob Lincoln didn't hire him. Jim Buss did. Jeannie Cosine. If Luke Walton got fired, is there anybody that can definitively come to his defense? I don't believe he should be fired. I like Luke Walton. I want him to stay on as the Los Angeles Lakers coach. I wish him success. But if Magic Johnson made the call that Luke Walton had to go, should we be protesting in the streets? They have the worst record. They're tied for the worst record in the Western Conference. They have the second, they're tied for the second worst record in all of basketball. They are a very young team. And that has a lot to do with it. But if Magic Johnson decided he wanted to go in a different direction, could we definitively fault him? So what's the uproar all about? LeVar Ball is the father of the starting point guard of the Los Angeles Lakers. As wrong, as classless, and as ridiculous as his comments were in terms of it being beyond the pale. And highly inappropriate. That does not mean it's not news. It means he may very well be very distasteful. But it doesn't mean it's not news. And for Stan Van Gundy to sit up there and say he got a problem with ESPN, but no problem with LeVar Ball makes absolutely no sense. Zero. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Your call is to close out the show in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! 
Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. I want to uh, uh, clarify a point because I don't want anybody to misconstrue what I was saying when I brought up Magic Johnson and had it been Magic Johnson with the coaches have been saying anything. I'm not pointing to anything racial. I didn't mention Magic Johnson because he was black. I mentioned Magic Johnson because he's the executive who runs the Lakers. I was making the claim that if you're Stan Van Gundy, Rick Carlisle, Steve Kerr, would you be saying this if LeVar Ball had said it about Magic, meaning the executive as opposed to a member of the Coaches Association? That's all I was trying to say. But that doesn't make their point right or wrong. What makes their point wrong is trying to decide and decipher what qualifies as news. They don't make that call. We do. And we make that call based on our viewing, listening, and reading public and the kind of things they gravitate to, whether we like it or not. Of course, there are many journalists that want to have nothing to do with LeVar Ball. I can tell you, I wanted to talk to LeVar Ball after opening night when his son wet the bed. I definitely want to hear from LeVar Ball after all that junk he talked about Lonzo and what he was going to do on the, in his NBA career. Without question. But I don't have any desire to talk to LeVar Ball right now because I think his comments cross the line because you're putting your son in the worst possible spot because you could have people looking at him wondering whether or not he's going home and telling daddy stuff about the coach or other players or anybody, anything like that. Magic Johnson's in a pinch, man. Because I think a press conference at some point should be held with Magic Johnson telling LeVar Ball, it's time to pipe down, bro. Ain't none of these private conversations you and I are going to have anymore. I'm going to tell you to your face. You need to chill out. That might be necessary. It just might be. Only got a few minutes left, but my man Carlton in Tampa, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, I want to talk about the national championship game Please. last night. But but quickly, before that, go on to the ESPN website. Go Hit NBA. Like eight out of the 12 stories uh, that come up under NBA are about the Ball family. And they're not just about the, the reaction of the Lakers or how it's affecting the Lakers. It's all about them in Lithuania and, and other experiences in Lithuania. And you're becoming the E-Network for the Ball family, for God's sake. You know, the E-Network promoted the Kardashians. And a lot of real sports people are going to have a problem with this. It might be the right move monetarily, Stephen A., if you can get all these viewers that somehow how you can monetize well, watching the Ball family, but a lot of people are sick to death of LeVar right, Ball and his right. antics. All right, but let me respond to that real quickly by saying this to you, Carlton. Every time you can, you catch me on first take, don't you? Yep. I didn't mention it today. I mean, you sit up there, you listen to this radio show. We talk about a lot of different things. You look at other shows, PTI and, and other sports centers and beyond. They're not talking about it. Yes, you might have the website. You might be making a valid point. I haven't looked, but I'm going to trust you because I know you know what the hell you're talking about. And you might have those valid points, but you are a 24-7 network who throws a potpourri of things out there on television, on radio, in print and beyond. And there are many things you do outside of that. So if somebody doesn't want to see it don't read it or don't watch it but there are other options that you have literally within the espn platform that's not doing that and that needs to be mentioned as well oh you said you wouldn't go to you wouldn't have gone to lithuania oh so hell no i, I would like your voice hell to no. be heard a little bit more with it because i don't think espn wants to turn themselves into the e-network for the I, I don't think they, I, I don't think i don't think they will and when you think about some of the preeminent personalities and with all due respect you're talking to one of them it's not something i engage in. ain't no way in hell they could have got me to go to lithuania for that story i promise yeah. you that i all wouldn't right. have gone but everybody right. ain't me but go ahead oh, on the old national championship game last night that game was the best uh, evidence you will ever see in your life how luck plays such an enormous factor in how we view, view uh, people through history, the most successful people through history. I'm going to call him Tua because I have pro- difficulty pronouncing his name as well. He threw one of the worst interceptions you're ever going to see. Next play, Fromm bounces the ball off the Alabama guy's head and it comes back to him. He threw another interception in the end zone, but it was joggled. And, and and therefore Alabama got a field goal out of that. If if the guy picks it off, he, you know they Alabama doesn't get points. On his second and his, on his second touchdown pass, Stephen A. He wasn't throwing to Ridley. He was throwing to the other guy who was double covered. Ridley cuts across the field and catches the ball. Now I give that cred, kid immense credit for not crumb 
trembling under the situation. After he got sacked for the 16-yard you know, sack in, in overtime, he could have completely fallen apart. But he collected himself, and he threw a magnificent touchdown pass. But his performance was all over the place, and everything that could have gone right for him, including getting out of three guys who had him tackled for a loss okay. on that play, the uh, third and call- seven play. Carlton, we're running out of town, so you only yep. got 30 seconds. Go ahead. No, but everything that could have happened that w- could go right for that kid went went right from. So, man, I'm not a religious guy, but maybe I got to look into whatever he believes because maybe <laughs> somebody <laughs> shined a light on him last night. <laughs> oh, by the way, Carlton, if you had a choice, real quick, between Saban and Belichick, who would you want? Oh, I take Saban in a in, in a heartbeat because because they haven't proven how he's broken the rule sixty five times. Carlton, so, so. Carlton, I set you up. I had to I had to make myself laugh to end the show. I knew what your answer was going to be. I had to ask you, buddy. I had to ask. <laughs> I appreciate the call, Carlton. Thanks a lot, buddy. Talk to you tomorrow, Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Looking forward to talking to you twenty two hours from now. We're gonna get back into some NFL talk, some NBA talk as well. Congratulations to Alabama, the national champions. Talk to y'all 22 hours. Peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.